53 years to the day after the first moon landing, NASA announced tentative plans for its next moon mission. The agency plans to launch the 30-story tall Space Launch System rocket on August 29th. That date is far from definite, and NASA said there are big challenges to overcome before liftoff. The mission is called Artemis 1. It will be unmanned and will last anywhere from four to six weeks. The spacecraft will not touch the lunar surface. Now I'm joined by our space consultant, Bill Harwood. Bill, walk us through this mission. What exactly will Artemis 1 do, and what does NASA hope to learn from it? Well, there's so much involved in this, John, it's, it's, it's almost hard to summarize in a short amount of time. The primary goal of the mission is to get the Orion capsule, we have a, a model of it here, uh, to go out beyond the moon and then to come back, hit Earth's atmosphere at about 20,000 miles per hour. That's going to heat the heat shield up to about 4,000 degrees as it comes in. They want to make sure, absolutely sure, that's going to work properly when they put people on board. So. Number one priority is test the capsule in real-time, real-world conditions. And, of course, obviously, uh, as you mentioned, the big space launch system rocket, the goal is to test that rocket, put it through its paces. They've never launched it before, but when it flies, it's going to be the most powerful rocket NASA has ever built. And so what will that power do? Does that mean they, they just get there faster? Is it more reliable? How does that play out? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the amount of payload that a rocket can carry all comes down to how much material can you get to the moon. You know, you got to cross 240,000 miles to get there. You've got to land hardware on the surface. And so the Space Launch System rocket has the ability uh, to send uh, nearly 50 tons of material uh, to the moon. Now, that's a, I'm sorry, 30 tons of material to the moon initially. Uh, more powerful variants will be able to get even more. And, of course, that's what you need to build up the infrastructure uh, they want to put in place to support regularly scheduled periodic flights to the moon uh, starting in just a couple of years. Any of these missions are incredibly complex, and NASA's had a lot of delays. They still haven't committed to a definitive launch. Is this the normal complexity? Is it being extra careful, or is there something about this mission that's particularly difficult? You know, the simple answer is all of the above. <laughs> uh, this is the biggest rocket NASA's ever put together. There are, there are thousands of systems that have to work right. They've done four fueling tests, four practice countdowns. They had some problems in every single one of those. So they're trying to go back through, make sure they've got everything just right uh, before they commit to a launch. And in this case, it's even more complicated than usual because you have to pick launch dates that take into account the position of the sun, earth, and moon uh, to be able to get this Orion capsule to the point it needs to be in space to actually set off for the moon. And so they have a long list of constraints just to pick which days they can use. Uh, but as you said, if they manage to get off on August 29th, if they manage to make that, uh, they're going to get about a 42-day mission. This capsule will go way beyond the moon, uh, further than any uh, human-rated spacecraft's ever been before, uh, before it comes back around for a close flyby that will target that reentry over the Pacific Ocean and that high-speed, high-temperature uh, descent that they're really looking forward to, to getting data on. Bill, my answer to the question, why are we going to the moon, is because it's there. But what's NASA's answer to that question? <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting. They've got data from orbiters uh, around the moon that show the presence of ice, uh, hydrogen and oxygen, in some permanently shadowed craters down around the south pole of the moon. In other words, sunlight never gets into these craters, and you've got ice deposits. Now, the long-range goal would be if you can find ice on the moon and if you can extract it using solar energy or whatever, uh, you've got the makings for rocket fuel, air, and water. So it helps you live off the land. And, and, and the second big reason to go there is to get practice, to test the technology and the procedures that you would want to use one day to send astronauts on a much more ambitious flight to Mars. So think of the moon as a training ground. They might get some near-term results out of it if they do find ice that they can get to. Uh, but it, it's, it's where they're going to try to learn how to go to Mars. And the final question, quickly, Bill, is when will we see footprints on the moon again? When will we see people walk on the moon? Well, <laughs> well that's a very good question indeed. Right now, they're hoping uh, by late 25, late 2026, uh, the third flight of this SLS rocket carrying people will actually descend to the surface. 
They're planning a lunar orbit mission in the 2024 time frame, and if that goes well, possibly people on the moon, the first woman and the first person of color in 2025 or 2026. All right, can't wait. Bill Harwood, thank you.